During the 19th century, Mars was more and more regarded as the planet most likely to harbor life, especially when astronomers thought they saw specks of light appear on the surface of the red planet. Many people believed that these were attempts to signal the Earth, and immediately plans were laid to build a gigantic mirror to return the friendly greetings. Later, Kurt Laswitz thrilled the world with his story about a crew of Earthmen who are captured by a magnetic Martian spaceship. The Earthmen are taken to Mars, where they are wined and dined on synthetic food. In a story by Robert Brain called Messages from Mars, a sailor is marooned on a lonely island off Madagascar. He discovers a rare and powerful telescope planet, which he immediately focuses on Mars. The Martians he sees are exactly 10 feet tall. Their favorite culture is music, which they inhale in great quantities through their noses. As the 20th century dawned, H.G. Wells excited countless imaginations with his approach to life on Mars. In his War of the Worlds, he describes an invasion of the Earth by octopus-like creatures who are encased in giant fighting machines. With their heat rays and poisonous gases, they are quite invincible until they encounter the common germs in our atmosphere. <laughs> Wells followed his science fiction story with a more serious discussion. He reasoned that plants would grow taller and thinner in the weaker gravity of Mars, and insects would probably be larger than those on Earth. The Martian animals, covered with fur or feathers during winter, would lose their covering with the coming of summer. The people of Mars would probably walk on their hind legs, their barrel-chested bodies covered with a coating of down. Their ample skulls would be crammed with intelligence. And their trunk-like noses indispensable for feats of engineering. Edgar Rice Burroughs supplied his readers with a complete Martian dictionary. Barsoomian, warlike people of Mars. Human bipeds with variegated color characteristics. Banth, Martian lion, dwells in Dead Sea areas, is carnivorous, has ten legs. Kalat, a pony-sized Martian dog with a frog-like head. Thote, a dog-sized Martian horse with about eight legs. Martian plant man, half human, half plant, 10 feet tall, has one white ringed protruding eye. frequent rumors that Martians disguised as Earthmen walk amongst us. These stories are perhaps strengthened by the thousands of reports of unidentified flying objects passing in an endless procession across our skies. Today, a space-conscious public avidly consumes tons of story material about life on other planets. A typical cosmic soap opera usually begins at a very ultra-secret government space project. The hero is a young electronics genius who is always busy formulating new laws of thermodynamics and astrophysics. The heroine is his secretary, efficient, hardworking, and rather attractive. Of course, the villain is a mechanical robot from Mars. He is usually controlled by a Martian mastermind whose appearance is too horrible to reveal at this time. 
The escape device is a late model electroplegmatic flying saucer. The story plot usually concerns the lack of some precious element on Mars, such as water or uranium or women. Take a letter, Miss Smith. Gentlemen, after due consideration and thorough calculation, it is my unequivocal opinion that there is absolutely no life on the planet Mars. <laughs>